Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, welcome to our Kartik reading. Uh, we'll wait for a minute for devotees to join. We already have my approach and approval. Suppose you were just waiting for a minute and then we will start. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, I will share one second. I, we have another group of reading. I'll share okay. over there if they want to. If they want to join us. Yeah, sure. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, welcome to Karthik Reading. Uh, today we have a very special speaker, His Grace Mayapur Chandra Prabhu. Uh, so just a brief introduction about Prabhuji. So Prabhuji is a disciple of His Grace Indrajnav Swami Maharaj. Uh, Prabhuji and his family they are serving like uh, like with two decades or two decades to all the Vaishnavas and Sannyasis. Uh, we know Prabhuji is very seen and is very dedicated in services, especially uh, uh, like preaching using uh, via Bliss Kitchen with Yoga Studio and then uh, promoting the Ahinsa uh, non-violence with Gita Nagri Milk. Uh, Prabhuji speaks on multiple topics like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrit. We have all seen Prabhuji in center like when he is giving class, he is so much realized in Shastras and he is having so much knowledge in different shlokas. So it's our fortunate that today again we are getting chance to hear Prabhuji. So I request all devotees to unmute uh, and welcome Prabhuji by one time Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Thank you so much. Prabhuji, Nimai Karuna Prabhu and the Iskon Bergen team. Thank you, um, um, Sujana Gaurangi. Like, what's Gaurangi? Sushila Gaurangi. Yes, Sushila Gaurangi Mataji is behind the curtain. She is organizing this and contacting everybody and reminding them, you know, a day before, a week before, and an hour before. So, Mataji, thank you so much for your wonderful service. And thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, given to me to uh, have the Krishna Katha in the month of Kartik. And I'm currently in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So it's kind of uh, I'm so much uh, indebted to all of you. So uh, we, have, we have a very nice topic uh, selected. Uh, we are at the chapter number 80, 83. So I will share the chapter 83 and I have tried to make some slides also. So I will share those slides also. Chapter number 83. Uh, as most of you are aware, this chapter is the meeting of uh, the queens of Dwarka, all the all the fortunate ladies of ladies who have the the um, unparalleled destiny of becoming the consort of the supreme lord sri krishna so they they are the wives of sri krishna you know and um, so uh, and we all know how the feminine energy controls everyone you know i mean what to speak of when the supreme lord is being controlled by that uh, that feminine energy, 
So Mother Draupadi is inquiring all the queens that you know, please describe me. How how did you girls have such a great fortune? You know, what did you do? What's how did you really you know how did you really um, start this? How did you what was your <clears throat> Good question. What happened really? You know, how how did this happen? And then, so I will uh, quickly narrate the stories. My uh, focus point of uh, today's um, presentation, my meditation is on the first two paragraphs by Maharaj Yudhishthir. We know at the moment Lord, Lord Krishna is at the <coughs> Kurukshetra. You know, those of who you don't know, our um, Madhavananda Prabhu is one of our very senior devotee, disciple of Gauru Govinda Maharaj. He is giving a lecture on this series. Krishna's, you know, meeting with the uh, meeting at Kurukshetra. And I think he's currently on, on some 125th or 130th episode. He speaks on this topic every week. You know, so, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of, a, uh, I think, one of the epitome of Srimad Bhagavatam. How Krishna is meeting his devotees after long time separation. And what's the feeling on both the sides? The, so that's a great topic to be meditated and um, at the at the present moment uh, Lord Krishna has just came after meeting the gopis and then now he's, he's meeting Pandavas and then um, uh, so Lord Krishna is um, welcoming Pandavas and um, having this nice loving reciprocation will come to come at the end to that one. And while Lord Krishna is having that intimate, loving dealings with Pandavas, the Maharani Draupadi, she, she takes this opportunity mm -hmm. and she is humbly requesting to know what did you girls do? You know, how, do, how did you achieve this the most kind of a, I mean uh, uh, the supreme destination, right? right? So how did you become the wife of the Lord, who is Purnata, yeah, who, who desires nothing, who has nothing to fulfill in this world. But then how did you all, all the princesses became his wife? And uh, I would just quickly go through that. Uh, each of the, like in the, in the Vishnu book, Srila Prabhupada has given one paragraph for each of them. You know, the uh, we wouldn't go into the details of each of the queens. They each of the queens. It starts with the uh, queen Rukmini, you know. So where we all know that she was um, queen Rukmini was supposed to be married um, to Shishupal, and how how she uh, right there was no time and there was very. I mean, Krishna was all the way in Dwarka. Actually, he was not even Dwarka also. He was actually Jarasang and Kala Yavana was chasing him. He was fighting with Jarasanga. You know, so people say that why did Krishna le left the battle? There's, there are so many kind of acharyas, they say. They, I mean, so many, they give so many reasons. But the most compelling reason out of that, Mother Rukmini called him. You know, he says, hell with this battle. You know, hell with... I mean, people say whatever they want to say. He moved immediately all his all his loved ones to Dwarka and he went to rescue Mother Rukmini. That was that was the real reason. That's why he left the battle. You know, the, I mean, killing of Kala Yavan and I mean all those things and so many so many other things happened. The the fire all around the Gomantak um, mountain and so on and so on. But Krishna, the main reason he left the battle because. Queen Rikuni 
send him a letter you know and we know we that's a wonderful chapter itself in the bhagavatam but then she said that that's what that, that's that's why you know <clears throat> krishna you know that's because i intensely desire and that's why he came and he actually grabbed me you know in front of all the kings like a lion will take his share among the dogs and pretty much the same same story is repeated again and again each of the queen each of the queen that was their intense desire that's the only thing they wanted and krishna somehow made it made it manifest for one or the other reasons you know king satyabhama that was the swayamtar jewel then jambavati king queen jambavati the same same story you know the the fighting with jambavan for 27 days you know who could who could fight with some like the, i mean we see five minutes fight with a with an expert we actually will i mean you know i mean most of i mean if not all of us will lose the battle with any powerful who kind of a wrestler warrior what to speak of fighting with lord for 27 days jamavan is doing that and then after he feels some what fatigue he's thinking what is this going on who can really you know who who but my master oh my goodness this is my master and then he realizes and then not only he he actually you know he gives that jewel and he gives his daughter also right so uh, that my desire to be a servitor of krishna life after life fulfilled right this is the then you and we will see this again and again the mood is there again and again all the queens my desire to be a servitor of krishna life after life was fulfilled and then comes the mother kalindi you know she is the yamuna herself and she has the same thing you know so the the story goes and actually i mean you know this is so amazing arjuna and krishna both of them are chasing one girl you know somebody can say wow what is this they are cousins they are friends they are same each people both of them were actually you know but then then i mean the of course who could compete with krishna and they, they and they are still you know that that's the charm you know i mean who could imagine like you know we can even think about this something like that you know i mean you know spending even a moment with krishna so what to speak of good i mean then same with mitra vinda right thus my desire see here uh, when i was taken by lord krishna my brothers wanted to fight and later they were defeated thus my desire to become the maid servant of krishna life after life was fulfilled right the the same mood is there the same thing queen satya mother satya you know see the um, right and she was also the her father had that a very very tough like you know the the conquering the seven bulls you know with like a just with your hands you go there but who i mean like a, the the who but krishna right he he actually controls the seven bulls like a lamb like a lamb that's that's what thus they came under control just a, just as a god's small kid come very easily under the control of children so thus i have the privilege of serving his lotus feet as a maid servant see so this is this is the mood they are the they are now they are right now on the they are sitting on the top of the perfection but their mood is still how could i be the servant of my lord what could i add what could i add in his service you know that's their desire and same thing with bhadra queen bhadra mother bhadra so this is um she is also her father fulfill her desire understanding her feeling and she said i pray to the lord that wherever i may take take my birth i may not forget my relationship with his lotus feet see this these are the most exalted devotees they give us the meaning they give us the kind of you know what should be our meditation right when we start the journey we are in the full swing or when we are at the when we are at the top what is their mood what is their meditation same thing comes to mother lakshmana 
the queen lakshmana you know so how the how the and i think the, the, this is the only this or this this particular pastimes has been described in so much detail it was exactly like the swayamvar of draupadi and even arjuna and bhima was also there and how everybody else kind of um, couldn't do anything because in the draupadi swayamvar there was a fish here they cannot see the fish they are able to see only the reflection of the fish and that moving target seeing, seeing the reflection of that has to be pierced and guess what hardly anybody was able to bow the string you know hardly anybody hardly anybody could really i know you know char the char the arrow and what to speak of piercing the fish arjuna was had some success he was able to pierce the fish but not the main part so you know arjuna again got the uh, right but then the, finally the lord lord of um, you know lakshmana he did it that right the celebrated heroes of the pandavas arjuna i mean we, we i already said that so and then i mean of course um, here she says that my dear draupadi when i accept the lord krishna as my worshipable husband and he accepts me as, as his maid servant right that's what the that's what that's the mood that is the mood and so i would kind of want to bring at the end where, where she says that you know i could guess he presented all the the mother lakshmana's father you know gave so much dowry to the lord and he said that my dear queen at that time i could guess that in my previous life i must have performed some wonderfully pious activities and as a result i can in this life be one of the maid servants in the house of the supreme personality of god right actually lord krishna did has has to go through so much tribulations you know somebody like such a great person like lord krishna has gone through and then you won the prize so how much the prize how much more the valuable the prize could be but look, none of this queen they really thought that they are not worthy they are actually they want to be the maid servants of maid servants of all of the lord and then the last one comes the rohini so this rohini is the is the chief among the 16000 she's representing the 16000 queens which are held by narakasura and how krishna you know that past time is so wonderful that how krishna actually none of them they had the ability to talk to krishna what to speak to talk to krishna they had no kind of a, they cannot you know they were not able to even uplift their eyelids and see the krishna in full they can see a momentarily you know we can imagine this situation a young princess is being captivated by a demon you know and like there's the the like a, there's no hope there's no future who would marry such a princess who actually who could get her out of that hell i mean and what to speak of the such a such a such a rejected such a lost such a kind of a person would would achieve the the best of the best the highest perfection you know they could have that desire in their heart but they could never express that what in a world they how how in a world they can express that but krishna knowing that desire from their heart he actually arranged to marry with each of them at the same time and not like a not like only himself all his intimate relatives also also replicated in that many numbers 16000 you know um, vasudev ji and mother devki and 16000 palaces and 16000 wedding going on at the same time every queen every princess because they are not married yet every princess thought that yes krishna is marrying me personally i am with krishna and this is my marriage my wedding is happening you know we can imagine about a young girl's kind of um, you know the feelings when she is getting uh, wedded you know her, her, so this is her exclusive function and none of them they feel slightest 
less of than anyone else. Yes. So this is the this is the story in the essence, right? So three so just thirty minutes is a kind of a too late to justify. But then we should we should still try, and because it's thirty minutes every day is, is a lot more to commit, you know. And then 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 we have the whole day to meditate this until the next past time comes, right? So this is the good fortune of the queens of Dwarka. Now, I think the secret of good of, of good fortune of all the queens, right? What was the secret? Always thinking of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, which is the way to release oneself from the bondage of repeated birth and death. And again, this is our main theme. We're gonna come on this thing, these things, how King Yudhishthir is actually you know connecting this at the very beginning. But this is the secret. Always man mana bhava. You know, always give your mind to me. Right? This is a see, I mean, how how wonderfully what we what we hear from Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, how his devotees are perfecting this and showing it to us that yes, this works. This is how this is how we achieve, this is how we achieve the perfection. Always thinking of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. That's the secret of the, the good fortune of all the queens. Right? What is their ultimate desire? Right? The touch of the dust of the Lord Sri Krishna's. The touch of the dust of Lord Sri Krishna's feet. Which he leaves on the plants and grass as he tends his cow. This is the ultimate desire that is expressed by all the queens in how in which mood in the mood following in the moods of they are accepting see this is the even though they have the most celebrated position who can imagine right in any household the wife the mother holds the center right they control the un unconquerable right krishna is a hand picked husband right so he is the perfect husband so they have the most celebrated their most celebrated status. But what do they, they know that they, yes, they are not in their um, perfection of their service. They like to do this in the mood of young women of Raja. In the, they think that all those people, they are far ahead than us. In their mood, you know, in the following the mood of the, and the cowherd boys and even the aborigines pulling the woman, right? They all desire all of these women, all of these personalities, they desire to take the dust of Krishna's lotus feet. But it is so kind of, uh, you know, it is so uh, significant and it's so much kind of uh, the the way it is being uh, pointed out by, by all the queens. The, yes, we really, this is now, this is not the, our. this is what uh, our the most cherished desire. That we want to serve our Lord and Master in the mood of Rajabasis. So that is that. That is that. Um, that's the kind of a final concluding part over there. Now I want to come come to the um for us, right? The what is the significance for us? And that is being addressed by Maharaj Yudhishthir in the very beginning, as he is seeing, as he is being received by Lord Krishna. At the very beginning. Right? So we'll go and we will end over here. We will discuss the first two paragraphs and then we'll end over here and then we'll have some room for you know reflections, comments, questions, whatever. The what was like when when um, Maharaj Yudhishthir and his brothers were received by Lord Krishna, he actually asked them, How are you? Right? We asked them what. What's what's up? What's going on? You know. So he, but then you know, but that was who, what I mean. He first of all inquired from them whether the situation was auspicious. Actually, there is no question of ill fortune. Should I make it bigger? Everybody can see it, or we can see. It. Yes. So actually, there is no question. There is no question of ill fortune. 
for anyone who sees the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Yet when Lord Krishna as a matter of etiquette inquired from King Yudhishthira about his welfare, the king became very happy by such a reception and addressed the Lord thus, My dear Lord Krishna, great personalities and devotees in full Krishna consciousness always think of your lotus feet. And this is actually a very beautiful verse. It, it is, they say that this is the end. Remain fully satisfied by drinking the nectar of transcendental bliss. If you look at that actual verse, the actual verse is that the so how the Acharyas and how how I mean Srila Prabhupada like uh, uh, Prabhupada and like they make us very clear. Here is the uh, Yudhishthira, right? Lord Krishna's really said. It is said that, like, so it is actually King Yudhishthira actually seeing that, saying that, Oh Master, how can misfortune arise for those who have even once freely drunk the nectar coming from your lotus feet? Now what is that nectar coming from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna? Right? If any, I, I just read it. I think that that's given in the Krishna book, right? So I, we wouldn't go for that. Otherwise, you know, I I like that. But how can how can anything that I I, I end without any question answer, right? So, but at least this is what what is that nectar? That nectar is actually the bliss that comes from serving the Krishna. That's the real nectar. Shri Prabhupada is explaining that, right here in this. The what is the nectar? Nectar is the um, the nectar my dear Lord Krishna great personalities and devotees in full Krishna consciousness always think of your lotus feet and remain fully satisfied by drinking the nectar of transcendental bliss right the service itself produces so much bliss so they are always satisfied with their service that, that bliss produced by that service and that's the real nectar the nectar which they constantly drink. So what is the, what is preaching means? What is what is the how it what is that the bliss that they are experiencing that sometimes come out of their mouth and sprinkle on others as the narrations of your transcendental activities. Right? When you are so happy about something, if you are if if you are happy and if you know, clap your hand, right? You know that, right? That's the sign that 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 all that 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 we we have um, heard that song many times, in in like many times, right? But this, he says when people are so happy, it's so natural that it is it is expressed in their day to day living. It is expressed in whatever they do. That's the real preaching, right? We have to be so focused in Krishna, Katha, the Swaranam, Shravana Kirtana, Swaranam. That we feel that bliss that automatically manifests as as kind of how and uh, in our in our day to day activities and that is where everybody else around us gets affected about around those great devotees they get sprinkled on others as the narrations of your transcendental activities in the form of Krishna katha this nectar coming from the mouth of a devotee is so powerful. That if one is fortunate enough to have the opportunity to drink it, he is immediately freed from the continuous journey of birth and death. Now this is so powerful. Such a powerful statement. You know, who in a world, we can, we can, it's very hard, very, very difficult to find out that who would not even heard once, right? But having heard this once, if one is to have the opportunity to drink it, if they have one opportunity, he is immediately freed from the continuous journey of death. He is explaining. The, our material existence is caused by
Kayak gini. Uh, not able to hear you, Pooja. Uh, can you please reach out? I'm sorry, I have a poor reception. Yeah. Oh. Up to what point did you do this? Yeah, we last was in last couple of months, like you were discussing about Shavanam Kirtanam and then how that is important. Yes. And then how so once one Yudhishthir... year. Yeah. Yes. So Yudhishthir Maharaj is uh, responding to the 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 inquiry by by the um Yudhishthira is responding to the uh, welcome by Lord Krishna and he's saying that you know people even who who has the opportunity to, to, to have this even once even once they are relieved of the all in, inauspiciousness what to speak of us who are constantly engaged in hearing your glorious activities how could there not be of auspiciousness all the time. How could there be any inauspiciousness? You know, but here, like um, the the couple of things as we mentioned that, like uh, the the powerful thing is that our 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 meditation, our service, our our sadhana has to be so much sincere, so intense. We should experience that bliss. You know, we should ex the bliss in that much that that we want to. That it becomes a spontaneous natural affair, you know, that we could that we become the instrument of broadcasting Krishna Katha, you know, message of Lord Krishna. It all depends upon our, our sincere meditation on Lord Krishna's lotus feet. And the the as explained by Maharaj Yudhishthir, probably you might have heard, but I just want to repeat it again. The mo the main reason is that our forgetfulness of the supreme lord you know the we have because why we are we are in the material existence we desire to enjoy separately from him and that's why as a result of that desire we have been given this false ego the understanding that i am this body right and then as long as i'm continuing in that form, my existence in the material world continues but the moment even if once somebody has the good fortune of hearing the the Krishna Katha, then they get out of this situation. Now, he's seeing one more verse. Okay. I'm just going to uh, read this one verse and then we'll end it. I know it's there already three minutes um, over time. So, the last verse of today's presentation, Yudhishthira Maharaj is saying that, since we are fully surrendered unto you, and have no other shelter than your lotus feet. We are always confident of our good fortune. My dear Lord, you are the ocean of unlimited knowledge and transcendental bliss. Right? This is the second verse that Yudhishthira speaks. He says that the reactions of mental con concoction in the three phases of material life, right? We all, there is no exception to this. If, if we are in the material world and if we are materially minded, then we are going through one of these situations. Either we are awake, either we are lightly sleeping, so that means dreaming, or either we are in the deep sleep. But actually, actually this is all illusion. It doesn't exist for a person who is fully Krishna conscious. Then. Right? That means you think, oh, do they do they not sleep, right? Do they not get? Are, are they not awake? Because which other condition really is there? Sleeping, light sleeping with the dreaming or the deep sleeping. So what do we? What, what what is what is being said over here, right? All these things are happening 
but a person devoted to Lord Krishna, fully, you know, fully immersed in the Krishna consciousness, he knows that he has nothing to do with this. This is happening on a bodily platform. Right? He has, he is completely separate from this. So that means like the example of sleep is very appropriate. That we can that we can understand very easily. Like in the sleep, we could have a frightening dream or a, or almost fantasious dream. You know, most kind of a, the there's a phantasmagorian, something un, un unbelievable, so good happened to us in the sleep. What's the value the moment we wake up? It had no value even when, when I was sleeping. Only thing I, I didn't know that this is the dream, this is wrong, this is the illusion, right? It had no value. Even when I was, I was sleeping, and even now, and now that I'm awake, it it is it is very clear for me that it has no value. Now, but then how do we understand that this wakefulness is also yes, exactly like the same? Because right now I'm completely attached to this idea. I'm fully sold. I'm fully sold to this idea that I'm this body, and I have so many things to do. You don't know, my dear friend. You don't know. You're telling me to do this and that, but how many, how many different priorities I have? That is must, that has to be done in this day, this week, this month, this year. You know, otherwise, I don't know. I mean, then they don't have any answer. What would happen otherwise? No. But actually, because of our that misidentification, our misunderstanding the identity of who we are, and that's why we are placing. we think that this is my home. This is where I belong to. Somebody is purposefully giving me so much trouble and going through so much suffering. And I think this is a real. That's my main, but that is the that is the root cause. And of course, even in the deep sleep, deep sleep also, we be, our mind becomes subdued. So now we don't see any dream, right? The body is already resting. Body is also kind of a calm and inert. But the intelligence is still still active. The moment intelligence is intelligence still has a knowledge. You know, the moment somebody wakes up, then we, we immediately get, oh, I had a good sleep. I had a wow. I am now I feel refreshed. But what refreshment is that? I'm still again identifying myself with the circumstances which are not real. Why this is not real? At any moment of time, it could be taken away. Any moment. Any any plans whatsoever you have, you could make it. You could make it like a child making a playhouse at the ocean ocean bank. You know where where is that playhouse? You know every wave comes and it gets destroyed, and child doesn't get disturbed also because he knows he's gonna make another one, right? So same thing, same situation is happening. Like in here, Yudhishthir Maharaj is saying that. The reactions of mental concoctions. It's all about our mind. My dear friends, please, please, please take this. This is Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita, and here Maharaj Yudhishthira is saying, it's all about our mind, where our mind is. is. How do we really connect with, with this world through our mind? Because my mind thinks this, my, I'm a boy and I'm a girl and I'm a father and husband and blah, da, 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 da. You know, the list is so long. So, but it doesn't exist in Krishna consciousness. All such reactions are invalidated by the practice of Krishna consciousness. Now I'm practicing who I am. Whatever situation is there, it's okay. What can be done? I, I don't have control over the past, but I have the control on this moment. Whatever my individual situations could be, it's unlimited, 8.4 million species. And each one of us, like even we'll say, we have say 400,000 humans. And like even like say, we are all, we are all say from the, we are all, I mean, say Indian background or Caucasian. We have maybe two or three out of the four, 400,000 human species. We are, but then each one of us has a unique individual situation, right? Our own. So it's an unlimited varieties of situation. It could be, right? 
But, but now that I have figured out that what's the purpose, my past karmas and my my whatever desires has borne this out, has bring has brought me to this juncture. I'm not this body, but how do I use this body to get out of this this illusion? How do I use this body to achieve the highest perfection? How do I do? How do I make? How do I make it? How do I make sense out of this? I don't have to be attached to the body, but yes, I still have this body. I, I don't have to be attached to the circumstances and families and relatives and whatnot, but I still have I have still have to deal with it. Yes, how do I do that? In terms of connecting myself in service to Krishna. In terms of helping everyone that is near and dear to me. Right? Right. And then when you say, then who should not be near and dear to me? You know, as we when we go, when we dive deep into the as we go more and more deeper, we realize that is everything is part of my Lord. You know, they all they all are serving in their capacity, knowingly or unknowingly. Then they, they might be serving the external energy of the Lord. You know, but they are all trying to serve my Lord. They are they are they are part of my team. We are all part of one team. How do I help them? How do I reciprocate? How do I sincerely thank for their help in my own journey? Right? So that's the that's how you are the ultimate destination of all liberated persons. Out of your independent will, you have descended to this earth by the use of your own internal potency, yoga maya, and to re-establish the Vedic principles of life, you have appeared just like an ordinary human being. Since you are the supreme person, there cannot be any ill luck, ill luck for one who has fully turned on to you. Now, next time somebody says, how are you? Remember this. How, uh, what could go wrong with you? Right? Nothing. You just, see, this is the how, this is the most kind of, um, the most eloquent person, you know, most qualified persons when they, even, even speaking, how are you? How are you, my dear? How they reveal the truth of the life in just saying, how are you? And they're saying, yes, yes, I'm so, I'm, thank you, my dear. I'm fine. I'm doing good. Right? Just this conversation between the Maharaj Yudhishthir, the Pandavas and Lord Krishna brings the essence of our life. Right? The, so my my meditation, yes, right? Like we we have we have how 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 much fortunate we are, right? Right? We we are actually so fortunate, right? Right, the, like the the queen that we can narrate in this 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 most confidential pastimes in the month of Kartik. Amongst the devotees, what could, what could, what is the, what who could describe the limits of our good fortune? But we, at the same time, we have to be very thoughtful, very careful, right? That if we are really in love with Krishna, we have to, we have to kind of put that into our action. Loving somebody means, you know, you take his his desire. He's like a, we have to take up, take his the his mood. He is kind of a, the 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 way he wants the things to be done. That should be our meditation, right? So the the like I should utilize my time as much as possible, sincerely, every moment, in every moment in service to Krishna. I should be always thoughtful of that. How this is going to please my Lord, you know? Like we on we we all know that this is the the most the most kind of a cherished. Desire, you know, he's a he's a apta kam, purna kam, but his most cherished desire that none of us, none of us go through this experience of suffering of death, death and birth, right? So we must try for that. We must sincerely try for that. We could be very small people, and we are indeed. You know, who are we? Kind of, I'm talking about myself. Very kind of, I know how many people know us. If someday we, if 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 I take, and I mean, like when we depart, who, how many, like 30, 50, 100, 200 people will notice that? Right, so we are we are we are very tiny, you know, insignificant people. But we still we still have that you know unique connection with some people that only we have it, and we should drip, take the advantage of that. With them, we should make our life you know worthwhile. Spending every moment, you know, wherever they are, you know, 
they, they say that it's a sajati of like a the association has to be with the like minded the like standards the like mood of the people right if that is that then that that our time should spend in that one if not we should help elevate them if they are elevated then we should really sincerely serve them and come to their mood right and slowly that our circle of this interior intimate should be widened with the circle of our beloved right that's what that's what we should you know um, aspire for i will end over here granth rash with bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhu pad ki jai kartika mantra ki jai you know uh, all uh, glory to the assembled devotees thank you so much uh thank you my poor chandra prabhu uh, it was such an enlightening class you started with how krishna left the battle and at last uh you taught every one of us like if you want to uh, adopt the battle of krishna if you want to go and uh, associate with krishna what are the steps so thank you vrinj prabhu uh, we can take one question so if any devotee has any comments or any questions they can unmute or put in the chat box uh so we don't have any questions so let us all uh thanks my opportunity prabhu for and let everybody all come all thank you so much all the devotees thank you vancha kare bol pasindhi pasindhi dev cha patitanam pavanti hari bol so thank you devotees uh, today we have seen like so many devotees join it is special kartik man so we request all devotees to join tomorrow tomorrow is very important topic vaishnava etiquette which will be given by his grace ram tulsi prabhu uh, so we request all devotees to please continue joining as it is kartik man so thank you all once again for joining and thank you my prachandra prabhu once again for most wonderful talk thank you all very much hari krishna hari hey, krishna हरिभो